Gen X grown up as a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listener John here. On the weekend of July 15th through the 17th, 2022, Gen X Grown Up attended SFGE, the Southern Fried Gaming Expo, in Atlanta, Georgia. SFGE is a celebration of all things gaming, from pinball and arcade machines to tabletop and board gaming and everything in between. On Saturday afternoon of this year's show, Mo, George, and I presented a panel discussion centered around computer gaming during the dial-up bulletin board system era. This panel was well attended by an engaged and enthusiastic crowd, which made the session just that much more fun. We recorded that panel live and present it to you here now as a bonus episode. We hope you enjoy the memories and the laughs as much as we did. Got about two minutes. Oh, it was one minute. It just rolled over. <laughs> the mine says, says two. Mine says two minutes, yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, two out of three. I mean, come on. <laughs> Time is not an election. All right. Mine says four, but I understand it's up to debate, apparently. Mine says, Mine says 359. Oh, God. <laughs> and look, there's more people. No, don't poke your head in. Come in. I saw you. Where are you going? I'm going to yell until you come back. They're long gone. They're Damn the, it. They're on the escalator. <laughs> and this now is all being recorded, really so that's going to be great. They're running oh, yeah. backwards against the escalator because <laughs> you yelled at them now. <laughs> Kick us off, sir. Let's get started. Oh, now wait, you wait, wait, not yet. Wait, now you wait. agree it's 4 o'clock. Five seconds. Five seconds? <laughs> three. Wait, three. One. Yep, yep. Okay, now it says 4 o'clock. Mine still says 3.50. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, now it says 4, right? <laughs> yep. There we go. See? There we go. Verizon <laughs> to the rescue. <laughs> Do we have a, t- a consensus for chronology yet? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Great. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping in for our humble little panel about the BBS years in gaming during that. Uh, We represent Gen X Grown Up. Myself, this is my friend Mo and George, and we have been doing this for about five years now. We're online content creators. We have have a weekly podcast and a YouTube channel where we create content on the reg, and we talk about things that we love growing up in the 70s, 80s, early 90s in that era. What? what? Did you just say on the reg like you're a damn millennial? Yeah, I've been talking to someone. On the reg? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Get off my Kool-Aid, man. Don't (laughs) don't harsh my calm or something, they say. Um, (laughs) Oh, God. Jesus, that's not even close. Keep going. Is that a thing? Don't Uh, troll my I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's lit. Um, It's it's lit. Okay. (laughs) One more in your office. By the way, this panel's not for you guys. This is just for us to talk to each other. Sorry. (laughs) Feel free to hang out if you want. But yes, so the the idea of of Gen X Grown Up Mm -hmm. as an organization, and the concept was that, look, we loved that era growing up Mm -hmm. in the 70s, 80s, and that time, and we saw a lot of younger people doing content for us, and they called it retro. And we realized that's really just our stuff. Thank you. you, Thank you. Thank you. You're right. That's what I said. That's what I said. And they throw a label on it. It's just because they didn't have a handle for what it was. They're like, no, this is just our stuff. It's just what we had, and it's just old stuff now. And that's kind of the tag they put on it. Uh, And we thought maybe there would be people of our uh, tenure that would appreciate hearing about that stuff from people who are actually there and our perspective on it. And so we cover content from both modern and retro stuff, but through the eyes of people who were there and just refused to grow up and grow out of the love of that. Yep. yep. Fair? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's, that's, that's very good. Yeah. Good job. Thank and, you. All right. I mean, my work here is done. Yes. Take it over. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so John's done talking now. Yep. yep. Mo, it's Mike up to off. you. Uh, we're, Okay, I, so I the why we're here? No, um, one of the things like we have a every other week in our podcast, we talk about we have a what's called backtrack. We look at something from the past and we just talk about what it was like, whether it be dial phones or long car trips or the Dewey Decimal the System. VHS, yes, the we actually did. Whatever. You are always going to bring up that Dewey Decimal System, I'm aren't you? I'm proud of that. One, I know actually. you are. You <laughs> librarian. Damn we it. talked for an hour on it. <laughs> and it's Somehow. entertaining as hell. Trust me. But anyway, um, and so one of the topics that we did talk about was BBSs. Before there was the internet, mm-hmm. there was the bulletin board system. So we, we, we figured it was a good topic here. We figured a lot of people here have experienced mm-hmm. it. And right. some of the young people probably don't know, and you'll hear about our trials and tribulations <laughs> trying to get this thing working. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would say the reason why we thought it was a good topic for this uh, is because 
right now, especially you go into the console room or you go into your living room anywhere, you've got an Xbox 360 or a Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox One, whatever, and every single one of these devices connected online, mm -hmm. you can play with people Real around time. the yeah. world. Yeah. We couldn't do that. <laughs> no. So the only way we could do that is through bulletin board systems. And for those of you of our age range, I'm not going to call you out yet, but you remember that that whole process was completely different than what we have now. Now you turn your box on, it's already connected, you're connected, you're in a connection, right? yeah. boom, you're on, you got your high speed, whatever. But back then, bulletin boards were individual computers, usually run by mm -hmm. some nerd like us. Just a hobbyist. Just a hobbyist yeah, guy yeah. who was stealing his parents' phone line, as I was. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, all right. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. wow. So you were high class. Slow down, Holly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We weren't in the corporate section of the podcast yet. <laughs> but, no, so um, you had your phone line. You had it connected up to your 300-baud modem, if you mm -hmm. were lucky to lucky. have that, yeah. right? Yeah. And... People would dial into your bulletin board or you would dial into somebody else's and you would play games mm -hmm. on these text-based, non-graphic, ASCII kind of <laughs> environment. You know, this, this is the second time we've presented this panel mm -hmm. at, at, at a show. And you can look around and you can see people that get it and they're going, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the younger guy is going... What are you talking what are you about? Talking? What's ASCII? What? It's just the internet, right? No, no. <laughs> no. <Right? laughs> it, it was certainly an experience that, you know, in the backtrack you mentioned, Mo, we talked about all the facets of the bulletin board mm -hmm. system. And it, you know, to peel away the layers of, you know, talking about, if you want to do a parallel to the internet, which is quite simple today, it was just like a peer-to-peer -peer internet in many ways. Sure. You know, I'm going to set up a little, not a network, but an access point that you can access. And it's just the stuff I have on my computer and you can remote from your computer and access to it. It started with just kind of some light messaging and some file sharing, but once you have a connectivity, especially when we got the rocket speed 2400 baud modems, Ooh, you can okay. do a little bit more you with that. You skip like seven years. I was yeah. at 300 yeah. baud, you went to 24. <laughs> You could then start doing some fashion of, of gaming that could take place on there. But So let, let's maybe we just start, as you said, it's like let forward, let's go back to that part, talk about that experience of, I'm a hobbyist, it's not even like I can turn on my computer and go, let's go play a game. Your computer said, huh, where, what? How do you even know where to access and how to play a game? Who to dial? What's the number, right? right. Mm, load yeah. star comma eight. <laughs> That's right. It's loading a disc. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, there was a game on the disc now. Okay. No. I mean, well, sometimes you get the numbers were found through, I mean, there were magazines or mm -hmm. hobbyist magazines that people would publish their numbers, that kind of thing. A lot of it was word of mouth. Like you yeah, go was, on one bullet board and they had a list of other numbers, you know, for other games and other places. Mm -hmm. That's connects. true. Yeah. I mean, the advertisement section was a good way that yeah. you would find that out through the messaging system. One of the ways that, you know, you talked about the Dewey Decimal system earlier, I found out like five or six bulletin boards in my town through the library mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. people were just writing on notes and literally putting <laughs> them on, on the a regular board. Board. <laughs> bulletin board. board. Yeah. And, I, and I absolutely saw bulletin boards that had the, the sheet of paper with the, they cut the little little tabs yeah. with their number on it. You right. rip it off and it said it's somebody's BBS and here's the number and it was written with a pencil. And, yeah. Yeah. and I think one of the things too that I remember doing from back in that era and I still have the actual physical thing was keeping track of your username and password that you would need to log into the bulletin mm -hmm. board and which bulletin board it belonged to, right? I actually wrote all of mine down on the top of a comic book box. Mm -hmm. so, and I still have that same <laughs> that box, box with lid with, in it, with all sure. those. And every now and then I'll dial that phone number and somebody go, who is this? <laughs> yeah. And when we talk about dialing a phone number, for the younger people, we're literally talking about dialing a phone number, mm -hmm. okay? We're not talking about texting. or it's you you're, Take your house phone. Unless you had your own line, like some people here had, apparently. <laughs> Show um, off. And it, and while you were on there, you that phone was dead to everybody else. And everyone else in your house would get, mm -hmm. you know, the worst thing in the world is you're in the middle of doing something or actually downloading something, and your mom picks up the phone. What, what, it's, like, it, what it's, is it? It's a horrible Hello, experience for everyone involved. For, for the person who picked up the phone, they're expecting a dial tone, and they go... <laughs> they hear this, I'm like, what? And the person, if you're on the one of the BBS, you're typing along, all of a sudden, a string of garbage, and you're like, Ma, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and whatever you're doing, you got to start over now, certainly, once you get back on. Well, and there were there were other issues as well. So I don't know when we're going to talk about this. we got our now. stuff. We're going to talk about it now. <laughs> so when I ran my bulletin board system, mm -hmm. it was off of a Commodore 64 with two 1541 floppy drives, mm -hmm. right? 
but it was on one phone line. I didn't have my own, so I was using the house. <laughs> We're going to bring that up. Line. I'm just going to keep just that in the ground. <laughs> hey, relax. I had my own phone line later, so I'll take some heat later. It's okay. <laughs> but there was also the problem of since it was a single phone line in the home, mm-hmm. and back then, you know, you had your one phone that was on a wall in the kitchen, likely, and that was owned by the phone company itself and everything. It had a 30 foot cord on it. 30 foot cord <laughs> with a little sponge, and you would take it on. The... No, but uh, using the phone line, I had to use it during certain hours. Yes. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when my parents got home, sometimes they would get phone calls from people. Because <laughs> they may want to, you know, use the phone. Or my <laughs> teachers calling to tell them I did something bad in school or something. They wanted to make sure they got all those calls. But <laughs> those, after, Were those frequent? Well. Mm, fair enough. All right, that's a different <laughs> Enough panel, that he but, mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so usually, I think I started mine at 10 p.m. Because my parents were usually going okay. to bed about yep. that point. The first week, or the first night, actually... I remember I didn't go around the house, and we had, even though we had one phone line, we had several jacks around mm-hmm. the house. I didn't go around and turn the ringers off. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a fun night. <laughs> that was that was a lot of yelling and screaming and what's going on because phones were ringing at all hours mm-hmm. and it just kept waiting. Uh, yeah, I was in trouble. Because remember, if you remember next time, I did <laughs> very next night. Now, once you had access to these systems, you had to dial in. Now, so there, there were a few tiers of these, and the higher up the tiers you went, uh, the more gaming was involved. We're actually getting to the gaming, I swear to God. We're getting there. <laughs> uh, so oh, yeah, I forgot. The absolute hobbyist like yourself that had yep. running on a C64, but uh, some folks did this as... Maybe it's a public service, maybe it's a part-time job or a hobby or side hustle or whatever you want to call it, yeah. but uh, many would have multi-line, which really opened up the scope of what you could do yeah. uh, that we'll get to when we talk about the actual games, because it started to dip your toe into that concept of what the internet became to be later, because now on a single system, mm-hmm. you could dial in, and you could dial in simultaneously, and you might even be able to real-time talk with each other in uh, what I'm saying in an amazing voice, something that's super normal today, but it right. was not an average thing in the past. You would send a message message like snail mail and maybe something would get back to you later you know previously uh, and and that real time access would open up another mode of kind of games that you could play yeah and i mean so there's also you're talking about there were still some hobbyists doing multi line mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but most of the time multi line meant like a corporate company that was trying to build themselves up there maybe were we those, should yeah. talk a little bit about some of those that Right. We're developing right. even bigger. Stages. And again, pre-internet, yeah. but there were several more. So we had a few of those services, right? Oh, yeah. Though? I mean, like uh, Genie was a big one mm-hmm. back then. Now, um, Genie stands for what? Because this is one that oh, I, didn't I didn't know for know years. Either. I love that because I didn't use the other ones. I used Genie, which right. was the General Electric Network for Information Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was GE, and they had their system. They were trying to fight with I mean, you know, the copy service. Who thinks the, the washing machine company is the one putting out an internet company <laughs> yeah. at that time? But. Well, the repair guy's board, so maybe just spun up the system. Well, yeah. that, that's world. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Uh, they, they bring they great things to life. life. <laughs> they brought the network to life. Um, Genie for sure. Yeah, yeah. AOL was one that came along. They were, and they, AOL was the and coaster they were that company. Cusp one too the that kind of went company. through the internet and stuff like I mean, that. Who here did not use the AOL either the floppies or later on the CDs as coasters? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> used them, right? That's, they were they were every, great coasters. You got one, like every like. Every 30 got seconds, mail, I got right? a new one. The yeah. floppies were the best because you just fix the right protect tab, and it's a free floppy. That's true. So yeah. that's yeah. The, yeah. the CDs were absolutely, you know, f- to pull. <laughs> also, uh, Prodigy. Prodigy, Prodigy right? for sure, right. Another one? Uh, yeah, and CompuServe. Was CompuServe. That, CompuServe was right, big right? Yeah. frequently. Does anybody uh, remember any other ones from back in that day? Yeah. Quantum Link. Quantum Link, yeah. That was I big in Commodore, that. right? That's that was right. a Commodore yeah, deal. That's yeah. right. Yes, sir. Mind Mind spring. Spring. That's yep. right. Yep. Wow. wow. Yeah. See, everyone's going, wow, memories. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> See, that, that wow was the thing that we love doing this stuff about because if you, if you get it, you get it. And if you don't, you get to make fun of the fact they don't get it. And we yeah. get it. So. so I guess we should get back to gaming. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, okay. <laughs> yep. so uh, the thing is, though, now with these bigger companies coming on, and you could have hundreds of people mm-hmm. dialed in at the same time, which before, you know, you're lucky if you have three or four. And again, you can start playing. And I remember the early games were things like uh, checkers. And you could play checkers, but every time you made a move, it sent you a new picture of the board with the right, move on right, it. Right. You know? But the cool thing was that you could actually sometimes real-time chat with the person you're playing with. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so 
we're talking about gaming, we might also want to go into a little bit of the other BBS functions too, oh, because yeah, that true. those other BBS functions. Let's not waste time on gaming first. in the gaming panel. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> it's on the list, <laughs> dude. You wrote it down. <laughs> this is your list, John. Just saying. <laughs> now, so true. True, but true. those a lot of those functions ended up being support mechanisms for gaming, like you were talking mm-hmm. about the chat. Right. Yeah. Originally, you know, your first quote unquote email systems mm-hmm. were just on that local board, right? You would send a message to somebody just a on the board. Usually, right? Or maybe you would post a general message in the message room right. that people could mm-hmm. read and respond back to. But pretty quickly, it, the one that you had talked about before, the FidoNet, right? Yeah, FidoNet was fascinating because it, w- it was it was an early kind of predecessor to what the internet became because it was really about sharing packets. So previously, if I had to go to Bulletin Board A, I could only talk to people on Bulletin Board A. Yeah. Right. And then ultimately, FidoNet expanded that so that Bulletin Board A was a subscriber to this network and you had a bit of, almost an email address. You had an at yeah. kind of where you were mm-hmm. on the network and it wasn't like the internet where you got the message right away. Like you're on a phone with somebody and go, I just sent you the attachment, ding, I've got it. It wasn't like that. Right. It was like, I just sent a message to a guy in Sweden. When the packets make it around the world in a few days, I will get the message back when he responds. And that was really cool because overnight, they would literally zip up the messages that were outbound and upload them to the next guy as they were sharing you know, the path. And they were helping disseminate those messages and information across other contributing uh, bulletin boards. Mm-hmm. Did uh, and- anybody else here use FidoNet at all? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 I saw a lot of nodding heads. Yeah. Sure. See, that was I. I never used FidoNet, but when you started talking about it, I mm-hmm. started looking it up because it's such an interesting part of that era. It's people who wanted the internet, but we hadn't invented it yet. Or like, how could we get those messages to other people? And it was, yeah. And again, people would use that. We used to use snail mail for I have a pen pal in Denmark, and I used that for playing chess over over right. mail. People would use that to play games, even just text based games, with their friends who were elsewhere, not co located. And it was a great way to to share that kind of gaming stuff. Sure. Well, and we've still got a lot of time in the panel, but to get mm-hmm. into the games, yep. there's really two separate and distinct versions of online BBS gaming. Okay. Mm-hmm. There is. The hobbyist who has the single line and there's certain games, but every single one of those, what'd they have to be? They had no turn choice based. but to be turn based. Yeah, yeah, turn based, text based. They had yep. to be turn based yep. because you couldn't have two people on the game, yep. on yep. the thing at the same time. So most of those games, like you mentioned, Mo Chess, Checkers, right. and the pictures that they would send, they weren't pictures, so no. to speak. Yeah. They were, you know, <laughs> slashes, dots, lines, asterisks designed yeah. in a way yeah. to yeah. form. Yeah, what do I have in ANSI or ASCII that I can draw a circle or a box with or that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, think words with friends today on your phone where you, you have to take a turn and hope the guy gets along to do his turn eventually. Right. Right, kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, and sometimes that might be an hour, sometimes it might be a day, but the key was you had to log off, then you had to figure out when should I lo- try and log back in because the bulletin board might be busy, a busy <laughs> signal. Right? Your gaming was not take my turn in my game. When you got... First, the busy signal was a problem, as you said, yeah. but once you were able to get on to take your turn, you took your turn zzz. Right, right. Well, yeah. take, I'm playing three guys in chess. Mm-hmm. I'm playing two guys in battleship. I'm playing, and <laughs> you mentioned Mo. We're playing games, but it's not. We're not playing Halo here, <laughs> right? The games were pretty much, you know, adaptations of board games or right. trivia games or kind of bar games is what we were playing. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was interesting, like you said, you had to play multiple because otherwise it was just yeah, you know, one game, one way. turn, yeah. and wait right. a day. Yeah. Ugh. Mm-hmm. No. And it's funny how different boards, you'd have to jump to different boards because certain ones had different games, too. Sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm here to set up my checkers one. I got to go here to do my hangman one or whatever the game mm-hmm. you had going on. And that was a mark of, oh, that's a good board because they would often have to pay shareware fees or whatever to get right. that. Right. And you're like, oh, he has that cool game that's only on a couple of BBSs because he got it to make his system more attractive mm-hmm. to get you in there. Yeah, I mean, it almost the first form of modules, really. Like D and D modules. Yeah, That's right. You would, you would, mm-hmm. you know, whatever operating system you were using to run your bulletin board system, yeah. they would have certain games that people mm-hmm. had coded right. and put into modules, and you could download them from other bulletin boards. That's what I did with mine. Mm-hmm. I would, you know, I made sure I picked one that had at least the starting games were all games that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. So there was chess, checkers. Battleship and yep. the Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Star so Trek. those are the board games. That's a great segue. Let's get into those really cool games that came out of something you couldn't necessarily have done 
right. before having some kind of an online component. So Star Trek yeah. first was a great connection. Any kind of network nerdery <laughs> connects with Star, Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> At some point, there's a Venn diagram with a heavy overlap. There. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mojo played the Star Trek game a Oh, lot? yeah, definitely yeah. did. So let's talk about that um, a little. Well, again, it be, it's just funny because you had these map. It's just basically a measured grid. Mm -hmm. And each one of those grids was like a system. And then when you went into a system, it made it another smaller grid. Was like, I think it was like eight by eight. You kind of zoom in. Yeah. Well, now you're in that you know, one. Yeah. Asterisks well, were stars. Zooming in kind of. <laughs> right. In my imagination, right. I zoomed in to the quadrant. <laughs> the but new page was a different view that was assumed to be zoomed yeah. in. You know, yeah. that's something to point out, though. So you're talking about the new page, which everything would scroll up yes. and you would get the new thing. But back in those days... You didn't have a scroll bar to scroll back to oh, see no. what you had no, left. It was, just, it was just a terminal almost. Right? Just that was at what a very got, important yeah. part because it was only what was on your screen in the moment. It mm. wasn't, you know, oh, I can go back and look at my saved state or anything yeah. like Couldn't that. Couldn't take a picture it, of my phone it, or anything. It was much yeah. more transitive. <laughs> no. yeah. it, it, it had an expiration. It was transient. It was, it was there and gone. It, mm. it wasn't an experience I was going to go back and relive. It was all just what was left on the screen. And right. the reason why I mention is because I distinctly remember like looking at the grid of the screen of whatever mm -hmm. it was I was playing and hand drawing what I had on the screen <laughs> so that when the next thing scrolled up, I wouldn't forget it. You still have it? So I'd have like pages of, you know, like here's this chess game in this state and here's this checkers game oh, in well. that state and here's this. So you can think about it offline later? Maybe. Yeah, because, you know, you want to see what it was before they made their move. You know, it's just like any other board yeah. game. You yep. know, you, that's part of the strategy. But Star Trek in particular, because that was one that, came about because of the BBSs. That didn't exist right, before right, right. that. Yep. And the fact that you had something that was one that was kind of interactive-ish, I guess I would call it, even though it was, it was a pretty much a static, made the board, and that's pretty much was it. But still, though, it was like you got that sense of discovering something. You went to a new quadrant, you had to discover it. You had to see, oh, here's how the latest stars. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Cleons, which is a big K that comes over you and <laughs> kills you. But it was. <laughs> the other thing was, I guess, you know, how much your – my brain – I didn't see – Asterixes and grids, you know, I saw a starship. I saw, you know, a Klingon ship over there. I mean, I saw stars. I mean, that's what was going on in my head when I looked at this old yeah. map. Just like an there. Atari, right? A, a dot is your guy, and this arrow yeah. is a sword, and that duck is a dragon. Just <laughs> pretend it is. <laughs> that's the best you can do with that. And, and something you just, you just mentioned sparked a, a thought in me that, unlike checkers and chess that are these, you know, take our turn or whatever, right. mm -hmm. this was the computer that you were dialing right. into remotely being the... Uh, being the dungeon master, in this case, the Star Trek yes, master right. or whatever, you were playing in real time with it as if you had the game on your computer, mm -hmm. but you didn't. Right. Right. You don't own this game. You, you don't have Star Trek. You only can play this game remotely. It's, you're basically playing a game on somebody else's computer, but because you're, the experience is you're sitting kind of alone, a different kind of socialization. You're playing, there was just a magic to saying, I'm, I'm on another computer somewhere well, over across the phone line. Something I think, that shouldn't work. I think that's important to talk about, though, because so... First computer system you ever owned, what was yours, Mo? Uh, VIC-20. VIC-20, right? Mm -hmm. You? Atari 8-bit. Atari 8-bit, <laughs> right? And I had a C64, so we kind of got the game. Big 800, loved it. But when you would get games, there was one of two ways. You could go and buy a store-bought cartridge or cassette, you know, that you would have to load oh, in and, sense. you know, put I it on the right things. place. I right. Uh, occasionally floppy disks, you know, like I had the 1541 mm -hmm. drives. But... Oftentimes, when you first got your system and you didn't have any money because, mm -hmm. you know, we were poor as dirt, you yeah. know, you would get a book mm -hmm. of yeah. games that you would you have to grab code you would, in and you line by magazine, line, right? Right? And you leave the computer on for three days because you didn't want to lose I it. think I still have my A to Z book of computer games at the house somewhere, and it's just each letter, there's, mm -hmm. right, there's, for each letter, there's an A game, a B game, a C game, <laughs> right. all the way down, 26 games, and I coded them all in, and some of them worked, and some of them, I I'm sure I going. did a typo. I love where you're going with this, right? Right. <laughs> but the bulletin boards... <laughs> It's all there. And yeah. many times, it's and the free. stuff that you would be typing in, someone else typed it in, they right. know it works, and they've uploaded it via Z modem or Kermit or X modem. <laughs> I, just, I just said all those to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's this slow, like, sh you watch it slowly come across 2%. 3%. I went to Taco Bell. I'm back. 12%, 13%. But you didn't have to type it. It was like somebody yeah. else did it and I had access to it without having to co-locate again and be able to say, right. you know, here's the disc, Mo. It's more like dial in. Someone has provided that for you and more games for you for free. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. You know, I misspoke a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. I said it was free. 
Yeah, yeah. There's an aspect of BBS online connectivity and gaming that we haven't really brought up yet. Yeah. And you have a on purpose. You have a story. Oh, we didn't mean to bring it up. I, I, I meant to bring. You it didn't up. have to. I'm going to because because you both ran BBSs, right? Yeah, we did. We did. But my problem wasn't running the BBS. His, yeah, no, yeah. he has a story. <laughs> well, the problem is when you grow up in the middle of Central Florida and there's nothing in Polk County that you care about or has any bulletin boards. Sometimes you find bulletin board systems that are. Long distance. Well, so oh, I remember the long, days of distance. long distance was. Dude, I mean, like ever in New York. I right mean, now, long, long distance, distance is only <laughs> doesn't mean if you're dialing another country. But we literally right. did an entire <laughs> right? backtrack explaining and talking about long distance because yeah. that's not a thing anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> but for the younger folks, <laughs> remember those area codes were actually had a yeah. meaning back like, then. <laughs> like often, if it wasn't in your immediate area, you had to dial, and it cost you money per minute to talk outside a of, of a certain region. Yeah. And coincidentally. Often the next county was more expensive than the next state. That that regional long distance. Well, mm -hmm. and the time of day. Time yeah, of day. Oh, yeah, that was right. Cool. So, so the, the problem better. that I ran into was that I'm isolated, living in the woods, and nobody else has computers, especially not Atari computers in my region. <laughs> but I found this bulletin board system that was a county over, and you, mm -hmm. so you dial well, in, yeah, and yeah. I can play games and download stuff from Antic that was there, and you know, I'll stay on for five minutes. I'll, I'll do it again later for 15 minutes or whatever, and, and it all was going great until apparently the phone bill came. <laughs> and, and when the phone bill comes, it has like a little window. You know, they send you the thing. It had a clear window where your address was in there. But they sent it in what looked like a banker's book because it was a fold out, like a pleated envelope. <laughs> because, because the bill was about this thick and it had lots and lots of pages. And I was I was actually on my computer and my dad came down the hall and it sounded pretty loud how he was stomping down the hall. <laughs> and he's like, who the hell are you talking to last month? <laughs> All day, $500 of Ooh. long distance in 1982. Yeah. <laughs> Money. <laughs> And it's $82. Yeah. So essentially it cost as much as my computer to play with my computer that yeah. month. In today's dollars, that's 12 months worth of detention. That's even <laughs> that's even more beatings than it was back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I mean, but it's because of the... It's no different today in terms of how easy, easy it is to get to fall in love with the experience, to get addicted to playing sure. that game or be connected in a certain way to and people. And you you'll think about it. And well, it was brand new then. And yeah. so you just kept doing it. You're like, I know it costs money, but uh, I'll deal with it later. And there's <laughs> different situations. So you were in the country. Mm. Mo lived in New York. In Manhattan, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm sure other people here lived in you know different city environments, urban areas. I know a lot of those cities were divided up by area codes. Everybody remembers area codes mm -hmm. for long distance. Now we have to use them because we're running out of phone numbers until they move mm -hmm. to some other mm -hmm. system. But the area code itself, you might be just dialing across town, but if that area code was different, there was a good chance you were getting charged mm -hmm. anyway. And yeah. those kinds of bills, the sneaky ones that you weren't <laughs> expecting at 13, 14, 15 years old, yeah. they're the $500 whippings that you would get and, later. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't even say I'll pay for it because I ain't got no money. <laughs> I'm just curious. Do anybody else here have a worse bill than the $500 one? Oh, there we go. There we go. How There's a hobbyist. Uh, I accidentally got one. Oh! Woo. Like you were five digits. Oh. Tell me you were five digits. It was like $700. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. You got away lucky but, then. But I was lucky because I, 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 I was only on for like six or seven minutes. That's, that's all it oh. takes. Oh. Yeah. Woo. This gentleman here's got one. Say, just so you know, your $500 phone bill in 1982 today would be $1,535. <laughs> <laughs> that, so. that, that, that feels about right. <laughs> yeah, you, a 1982 but by God, used car, I got right? to play yeah. games. It didn't have to type them in myself. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that. so yeah, it wasn't free, right? There were times when you definitely <laughs> would get charged. Yeah. yeah. Now, did anybody like? AOL, they presented themselves as the internet as they moved into they that did. age, yeah. but yeah. they also had fees. So it yeah. wasn't just your mm -hmm. long distance. There were per minute fees That's on right. a lot of these different systems, yeah. and they would even limit, like AOL did. Anybody who was ever on AOL uh -huh. for any length of time will attest to this. 
you didn't get the whole breadth of what was out there. You got what they curated mm-hmm. and wanted to see. Well, they worked right. very hard to make people believe they were the internet yeah. so they wouldn't leave and go beyond the internet, right. <laughs> quite frankly. But also don't forget that you also had these lines that like, oh, if you want to do 1200 it's this rate to sign in my BBS. They did it's charge less. more for different bought rates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you yeah, want to go true. slow, it's less, but you can be on longer. It was, doesn't did make sense. But anybody yeah. besides us run their own BBS? Right there. Yep. Well, yeah, nice. you had your line. I'm yeah, right. we, we learned that. <laughs> Anybody yep. else? There's one here. Yeah, one, one back there. Yeah, Four or so, five BBSs, yeah. So we've got like 20, 30 people in the room, and there's like six, seven people in this room. What a percentage that is. That's I know. great, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, but that's what I'm saying. I think there were a lot, of, a lot more hobbyists with the technology back mm-hmm. then because you kind of had to be in order to understand how to use it. It's not like it is today where you literally power it on and there's like some kind of welcome walkthrough thing that yeah, teaches yeah. you, right. sets everything up for you like Windows 10. Right. You, Windows you, 10 is ready for you to remember use. Remember when computers <laughs> came with an instruction manual that showed you how to use your computer? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Spiral bound. It might teach you some programming. It mm-hmm. might teach you how to do some assembly. And, and now it's like plug it in, you watch the movie, enjoy a computer. Right? It was, <laughs> if it doesn't work, call, you know, call it's a, service and then you're... So this is not bulletin board gaming related, but I want us to talk about our, Atar- our Amiga 500 BB customizing story. Yeah, well, so I, there's there's a gaming aspect yeah. that, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Amiga was a great computer. Any Amiga users here? Oh, there we of go. Of course, multi-line this, guy. This guy. There we go. <laughs> Have we met before, you got a maybe? I don't know. This is, did we hang out? <laughs> so the Amiga was just, it was it was really ahead of its time, and that's, uh, that's what Amiga users love to tell you, but they're not really full of crap. I mean, it really kind of was ahead of its time in many ways. Uh, it, graphics capabilities and audio capabilities, multitasking, all that, but once you were able to get those online, there were other Amiga-enabled BBSs that mm-hmm. were run on Amigas, and what they would do, frankly, is they would enable way more interactivity than, again, it's really kind of reaching into client server of today across the internet, rather than just spewing as asking and antsy text <laughs> to you, it's like, okay, let's agree, you're an Amiga, I'm an Amiga, we can do Amiga stuff, so I'm going to send your Amiga information about what's going on, and let your Amiga draw it, and plus, the mind blower was, why don't you use your mouse to move the pointer and Ooh. click on something on the BBS, and I'll tell the remote computer mm-hmm. that you're doing that. And they would do that with some games. You know, maybe you want to move yeah. your chess piece. You could actually I, click on it. I distinctly remember the first time I mm. logged into an Amiga graphic BBS and clicked a mouse, and it did something. I sat there for seven minutes. Just <laughs> <laughs> exactly, seven minutes. <laughs> what I did executed something on that other computer system, and then it came back and did something, and it was quick. It was like almost instantaneous. I, I love looking around the room at some of the younger faces, and they're going to leave and go, these old guys are impressed by the stupidest shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing the things they think are cool. It's just normal stuff. But that's, but at some point, it was the first time that we saw it happen. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of growing up at Generation X or in that era that we saw so many things make a paradigm shift from I've never heard of it to we can't live without it. But there was another... Amiga BBS story that I wanted you to tell. Oh, did I, what did I miss? The modification. Oh, that, that, well, that's, uh, that's definitely not about online games. You're, just, <laughs> you're literally just talking about the fact that we utilize the BBS right. to get instructions from some unknown, faceless, nameless person online that said, hey, you know that Amiga you have that has allocated memory, some is chip RAM, some is fast RAM. The chip RAM is way better, and you can double the amount you have oh, by cutting this contact trace <laughs> on the board. And what could go wrong? And I, I said, George, look at this. What I found yeah. online. This is great. And he said, that's a great idea. Let's try it on yours. <laughs> well, that's a good friend. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Why do you think I told him I was hoping he would go, let's try it? But, it, but the reality is, the point of the story eventually is we tried it and it did work. Yeah. And then he was quick to say, do it to mine too, please. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the I great mean, thing is that we were... It was that, again, the young faces going, so you read something online and it worked? Yeah. And, but. <laughs> but there was no malevolence. 
That was the difference at that point. Everything was way more about being helpful with people. There was more about sharing information because of that hobbyist culture Mm -hmm. that had to develop from the first few years of the VIC-20 C64s, Mm -hmm. the Commodore Pets, all those systems Mm -hmm. that, like you said, you had the big spiral-bound notebook, you had to read. Well, not everybody wanted to read, but everybody wanted to go cool stuff, so somebody would distill all that down. Mm -hmm. Here, do this one thing, and it's really awesome. Well, it's because being on the internet, or uh, the internet, being on BBS, I'm sorry, being on BBSs, it wasn't just like breathing. It wasn't just on your phone or in a a box in your pocket. You had to work at it. And so the people that were there were the enthusiastic hobbyists that were excited about it. And they weren't out there saying, hey, you can microwave your phone to charge the battery. They said they were actually, (laughs) they wanted to encourage other hobbyists to get involved in this thing that they loved. And so the things we found were not, you know, people messing around with you. It was cool stuff. I mean, there were the occasional, I guess, trolls would be today, right? Like people, I mean, it was rare. And the thing is that as soon as you found one or if there was one, the sysop. Yeah. Well, and the good users would <laughs> Wait, dogpile on it and go, like, stop, they'd cut it off. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there was somebody actually watching what was going on. Like, have you ever had a sysop just jump into something you were doing? Well, I mean, I was a sysop myself. Oh, so, yourself, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was, you know, you. I know you've mentioned it once or mm-hmm. twice, the, the word. It was kind of voyeuristic a little bit. You mm-hmm. would, literally, <laughs> it was my computer system, and I would be watching somebody log in and type in their messages or play their game or whatever it was they were doing. At some point, everybody remembers downloading pictures one scan line at a time right and everybody like, knows yeah. well, what, are you, right. what are you talking about I don't there know was a specific that. picture oh, that was know. downloaded a hell of a lot on those bulletin board systems right. artwork good, good hair yeah. <laughs> good eyes keep going nice nose right. Right. we're still going but, <laughs> 500 dollar bill later <laughs> but if you did see somebody at least for me if I did see somebody on my bulletin board that was being abusive or mm. rude or mean or whatever I would instantly log in give them a quick scolding in text <laughs> yeah. and give them an opportunity to delete what they had done mm-hmm. or give them an opportunity to apologize. And if they didn't do one of those two things, they were done. I deleted their account yeah. and they would then, if they wanted to try and keep doing it, they would create a new account. Everybody mm-hmm. remembers doing that. You know, you might have your one username that you try to use <laughs> everywhere, but sometimes, you know, your account would get lost or expired or something. Mm-hmm. You had to do a new username. Yeah. But I've actually had other experiences where I was on something and I was floundering or something. Like mm-hmm. I was searching for something, couldn't find it, or I was looking, and then sits off like, hey, what are you looking for? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm like, you know, I was like, whoa, who is this person? And I'm like, this. He said, oh, yeah, and he actually walked me through. Here's how you do that. You know, here's how you do the search for that. Well, yeah, it's because the if, commands. Yeah. If you're running that BBS, it's like you've created this playground. You've created, I want people to come and enjoy these things, play these games, play, you know, do this messaging. And so the voyeuristic aspect you mm-hmm. talked about was like, sometimes you would sit and just watch people yeah. play on your computer, which was fascinating. <laughs> and then sometimes, as you said, if you, they had trouble, you were floundering, yeah. you would help them, or you could jump in. But, but it, was, it was one of those early aspects, especially aspects, especially on the early BBSs, single lines, where you had a real-time chat for maybe yeah. the first time. You're like, that's true. That, yeah. That's the part that, I think yeah. that blew me away. Is like I was real-time just chatting with somebody. Yeah. And, and sometimes character by character. We're not waiting yeah. for a text to come in. You're like, <laughs> like we're watching it tick <laughs> as right. a guy types it. It's, it's a war game. It was like the first it. version of the three dots doing the little wave <laughs> on your text message phone now, right? right? Yeah, it we was, see it happening. It was very... It, that was one of the unique aspects of BBS because mm. it was so early in computer development and connectivity, networking, all of mm-hmm. that stuff. Every time something new would happen, every time a new game might be on mm-hmm. a system or every time a new like ASCII character set might get introduced to draw graphics or something like every time it was new, it was fascinating to me every single time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now... Something new comes out, and my first reaction is, "Do I really give a shit about that?" <laughs> well, there's so much, so much. So much. So you take much. it for granted almost, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I've talked a little bit about you know the Amiga graphics aspect, but as it pertains to games, we've touched on a t- couple of things. I want to make sure we highlight where the game experience was kind of dictated by how they could create an, inter- an environment for you, an interface. Mm-hmm. Right. And so text was the most predominant mm-hmm. thing. Star Trek did Star that Trek with did, dots yes. and stars and the Ks and whatever. Uh, and then they started using the expanded you know, ASCII or ANSI character right. set, which again, they could draw, which mm-hmm. was really stepped up the level because you could draw some boxes and some sure. lines. And that's when they started being able to do something for games beyond just scrolling the screen. They could go up and update a region of the screen. You know, they, yeah. could, they could actually redraw a section, blank it out, and then draw a new section. Now, I always found that extremely fascinating for gaming because you actually watch the computer 
erase some stuff, draw some new stuff, mm -hmm. and then move the cursor, erase some stuff, draw some <laughs> new stuff. And as slow as it was, it was almost like you got to watch the computer think how it was A little doing bit, that right, work. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I see, he's replacing this and you're doing that. It's something that happens now inside of our modern games that you don't see because it happens in between frames. Yeah, well, so and you saw it happen in real time. I think even with the gaming systems that we had back then, your Atari 2600, your Intellivisions, mm -hmm. ColecoVisions, those were so much far advanced graphically mm -hmm. over the bulletin board systems. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Seeing those comparisons even back then, it was a window into what was behind the scenes that yep. you didn't get yeah. with a 2600 in its cartridge. You know, you plugged that lovely Pac-Man port into the 2600. <laughs> <laughs> but it was instantaneous, right? There was yeah, no, yeah. like, waiting for a program to load yeah. or anything like that. But on the bulletin board, you... You know, you had to be yeah. patient. You did, yeah. Well, I also like the fact that when bulletin boards, because there were so many limitations, that you had to get creative. They had to get very creative how they mm -hmm. got things done. I definitely believe that sometimes limitation makes creativity, right? Well, so I think innovation strives innovation, in limitation. Right. Yeah. You know, because I think one of the early games I played, I think it was one of the precursors to Zork. Remember the old Infocom? Like the uh, Scott Adams game? Adventure the kind Scott of thing. If yeah. there's anybody in the room that doesn't remember Zork, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> If people it was, leave, I'm going to punch you. I, I'm, am I wrong? <laughs> well, I mean, they belong. They're here to learn about Zork Okay, now. all right, fine. Like, I'll, leave, I'll let you look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but still, it was a way of like making this interactive game all strictly text-based. Mm -hmm. But it was, I mean, I can't tell you how many hours and hours I oh, spent yeah. on that. Yeah. And then that was what, the, you go to these bullet points at Chatter years, everyone's talking about it. <laughs> what did you do here? How did you get past yeah. this? How did you oh, get you the key from the damn east. orc? <laughs> Come how on. did you yeah. light the torch? <laughs> what <laughs> happened there? Yeah. Where, where did you get light the torch? There's a torch? Yeah, so reminding that this text adventure reminds me of kind of having the love of Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. as many of us did in that era. Like, multi-user dungeons, MUDs were spectacular and blossomed. I hear the, yes, back here, it's great. <laughs> it was a chance, again, to play kind of a role-playing game inside of that computer, and graphics didn't matter so much. They used that innovation yeah. inside of the restrictions. Like, you know what? I can tell you what your hit points are, and I can draw maybe a, a little antsy picture of a monster, a kobold, or whatever you're fighting, <laughs> and you'll just use your Atari duck is a dragon mentality to figure out that yes that's the experience I'm having and it was enough yeah so outside of the hobbyist mentality I really mostly cared about playing games big arcade mm -hmm. guy I loved going to the arcade <laughs> playing Galaga and Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and Dragon Slayer and all those so trying to have that gaming experience at home mm. First was the 2600 but as soon as there was a device that I could have control mm -hmm. over with that Commodore 64 and setting up an online bulletin board system, my whole gaming thought mentality changed. It didn't matter whether the graphics were great or crappy. Mm -hmm. It just mattered that now there was interactivity that I could have playing with somebody else and I really didn't even know where they were calling from. Mm -hmm. Like they could literally be on my right. bulletin board from China for seven minutes apparently and have a <laughs> $700 phone bill. <laughs> And could be on there. And oh, nope, there goes a guy that never played Zork. Sorry. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, you know, it was just, I don't know, it was just a fascinating experience every time. It goes back to that sysop voyeur stick thing, I guess, mm -hmm. but yep. I loved it. Yep. Yeah. Well, it was a way of reaching out to like minded people, especially if you live like, you know, in a smaller town. Mm -hmm. It was probably yeah. a lot harder to find like minded people there, but here was right. a place you dial in, and that's well, you everybody. Walk, you walk out in the front 40 and holler, and nobody answers. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, well, to that end, you know, I know you lived in a more, much more, the most metropolitan area yeah. on the planet. <laughs> right. You know, we've also often talked on our show about how it's interesting that we're great friends, but we're free, three very different people with very different backgrounds. Like, super in the woods, su Manhattan, yeah. and then much more like suburban. You yeah. grew up, you know, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, so, I think it'd be interesting to talk about, uh, which we touched on very briefly, what is the experience of... It's so different than I'm gaming with a friend, we're getting together, like we are we are out here at SFGE where we go out and we sit down across the table from one another. Mm -hmm. There's that experience of a different kind of socialization that was born out of the BBS era okay. that grew out of that, mm -hmm. right? It's, 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 it's still socialization, it's different, it's a different <clears throat> skill set, but so you, here you are, you're at your computer, you have a, a BBS to dial into and you start that experience of what's that like? So, I mean, there's so many different parts of that, mm -hmm. but if you want to talk specifically about friendships and connecting mm -hmm. with people online, it did something for me that 
I did not take for granted, and even to this day, I still think about it each time that I make a new friendship in that manner. I grew up in suburbia, like Mm -hmm. you said. I had a dead-end little road in a little bitty neighborhood, Mm -hmm. and we had like six kids in the whole neighborhood that were my age range, right? Right, Right. that's your squad. Yeah, that was my squad on our dirt bikes, jumping (laughs) ramps, and trying to do stuff that would get us in trouble in the woods or whatever. Throwing rocks at each other. Throwing rocks at each other, (laughs) playing army men, whatever. But... As soon as I got to the age and the experience with a C64 and logging into another bulletin board system and finding, like you had said earlier, like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Remember when we were really little, the only way to do that was through that old pen pal system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This was now the modern pen pal equivalent, but... Again, I was kind of in control of it instead of just writing some anonymous letter that might find somebody and later on we mm-hmm. but that's just one person. This was now hundreds of people and maybe even thousands of people on the bigger mm-hmm. bulletin board systems. That aspect of communication and being able to expand that little neighborhood pack of friends mm-hmm. just totally It's a revolution. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess for me, like, I grew up in Manhattan. Um, and so from there, I was like, yeah, I had just thousands of kids. I mean, literally, right? Mm-hmm. But I didn't know anybody else who was interested in computers Okay, okay. You know, in my neighborhood. I yep. mean, there's nobody really. And to find some place that you can go on to, dial in, and not feel like the weird kid. You find your people there, right? <laughs> you you, know you mean, had your little like squad. Not be the odd a, right. ball kid. But you, you know? found the squad of other computer people. Right, right, yeah. Um, and the funny thing is I actually met somebody who was in my school. Mm-hmm. He went to my junior high school. I was like, wait a minute. And I'm like, you're so so? Like, you have so. And then we wound up becoming really good friends after that. But both of us, like, we never talked about it in class. I mean, it's not, it's not no. something you brought up in public school in New York. It know? was, well, it not was a more rare situation. Now, everybody's got a computer in their pocket. Yeah. But back then, it was a more rare, like, it was way more common to have a friend with a baseball glove that sure. you could go out and yep. play sandlot baseball yep. or kickball or whatever than it was to have somebody who knew and understood. Oh, I've got this thing called a computer, and I've got tape drive, and I've got this <laughs> book that lets me put. Per- mm-hmm. That was a v- much more rare occurrence. I remember I had a conversation with two guys at my middle school, and this was before I really got into my C64. Please forgive me, but I said <laughs> to them, they were talking about their computers, and they were talking about playing games on them and stuff. I said, You nerds, those computers are just a fad, they'll be gone in a year. <laughs> Yeah, is that, that, is that your job now? <laughs> 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 but you know, back then it was—that's what I mean. It was well, so were, rare. Yeah. Well, many things had come and gone like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not at a hula hoop show. Those games came, came and went, right? But they <laughs> were like, all the hotness for a little while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was understandable. You would think that. Yeah. How about you, John? What was that for you? Well, it was really just. It, it, it opened up a world that I had zero access to. I got the Atari computer because I had the Atari 2600, and it seemed like a logical progression, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's the reason that I buy every stupid thing Atari plasters a name on today, because <laughs> it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling when I go, ah, oh, there's that little logo, and here's my money. Yes. But so I went to that computer, but it wasn't, not only was the Atari not ubiquitous, having a computer was not yeah. necessarily a, a, a foregone conclusion in any household. So when yeah. you find someone else who has that computer, I met a guy who had the same thing yeah. and we're like, dude, we're blood brothers apparently now because <laughs> we got, we arrived at the same unlikely destination. And so we frequented the same bulletin boards and we played in the same environment. But, but it was just that one guy that I knew locally, but as soon as I could get out and touch the world and play those people online that I didn't know that were in the next long distance area code or whatever, <laughs> it, it, was an, it was an access again, it, much the same way, regardless of where we lived, we were able to reach out and interact with people in a way that had never happened before and do it across a leisure activity that the computer itself was a hobby and a great time. Right. And then the games you like to play was an extension of that. Mm-hmm. And it was like, just it's chocolate and peanut butters, both great tastes, it tastes great <laughs> together, and we're loving it together. And it was just Is a that great still commercial kind of, anymore. It, it was, damn it, at one point. <laughs> I just so remember, I remember you know, you know, you trucks, cash, you can remember yeah, that. Yeah, right. If you're starting to disrespect Reese's, we're going to have no, a no, bigger no. problem. I just, we're we're going to have a problem. I'm just trying to remember the last time I saw that commercial, that's all. It's been I a mean, while. If you're a die-hard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. We had a lot of experiences around the bulletin board yep. systems. We, John, you and I ran bulletin boards. Mm-hmm. Yep. We all played with different bulletin board systems from the hobbyists all the way up to the corporate stuff. Sure. But this panel shouldn't be just about us. We should let some questions come through. Good right? point. Yep. Or, or experiences. 
So does anybody have any questions or any comments or want to talk about their experiences? Or like, why the hell didn't he talk about this yet? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Go ahead. Well, one of the things you guys mentioned as far as where to find the phone numbers and where to get mm -hmm. contacts on them, and they kind of skipped over a big, 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 big thing that was across the entire United States was 2600. Getting that magazine. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, right, 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 right. Yeah. magazine. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, right. They had like a white pages in there, yes. didn't they? That's, That's right. right. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. When you go to my county, there's nothing in there. <laughs> That's the problem. But yeah, right. That was a nationally, I guess it was a nationally published magazine. It wasn't regional or anything. Yeah. And it had every state and broken That's down right. by. You know, oh, I never advertised in that, but I wonder what the fee was to get your bulletin board listed. I, th in yeah, I think it was a free listing, it. wasn't it? It was a free listing. It adds really? a magazine, didn't they? Verified, it was a free Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. That ads in a magazine, that's like how they pay for ads. It's, it's, just like, it's like paper Google. <laughs> paper Google, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Those? Yeah. <laughs> we got one that right here. That goes with our yeah. rotary telephone right. podcast. So, so lo locally, I had a bulletin board in, um, in Cobb County here in Atlanta. We actually had, um, I don't remember who originated it, we had an organization of Atlanta SysOps. Okay. That okay. maintained a list. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the 404 area code had a BBS pretty much had a list of all of the local and we would get together, you know, once every few months, you know, down, down the street. They would have parties. Mm -hmm. like that. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a community of poultry. So it was, like a, it was like a more focused, just computer user group. It was specifically of BBS. It's just ops, sounds like almost. There were, there were probably 100 bulletin boards on there. I can see that in Atlanta. That, that's a... Just an embarrassment of riches. That's fantastic. I right. wish I'd been here then. Well, I mean, and we, you know, I know we had a similar thing at our library, but it was, it was generally geared around, you know, either a system type, like in our case, Commodore sixty four, sure. or mm -hmm. it was geared around an area or an interest group. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, I think first off, I'm just an observation. I think a lot of what you're talking about in BBS, I think it would be something like Reddit. Reminds me a lot of that. Reddit definitely is the yeah. chat heavy version yeah. of one yeah. of the I things. I think you on could slice sources. the BBS yeah. experience into pieces and, and trace how it has evolved into a certain thing. And I think the you know, there were uh, there were certainly chat boards on I know mm -hmm. on my BBSs that I ran, you had I would have one for Okay, Babylon Five, sliders. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever sci-fi was on at the time that's now dead, right? Yep. And you'd have a section that's that hobbyist or the interest group we talked yeah. about. But you know, then that kind of became message boards of the internet day, and then finally Reddit became the well, ultimate. And even message between board. there, Usenet mm -hmm. groups, Usenet groups, oh, right? Yeah, right. Usenet. Yeah. So that's a wild west still. Oh, oh geez. There. Is there, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. There's some crazy stuff yep. on there. And you had a second part, go ahead. Uh, yes, and I think you covered it a little bit, but. It feels like a big jump from BBS to the internet where we are today. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of what happened, that kind of bridge between IRC. BBS and where we are now? <laughs> yeah, IRC. Internet yeah. Relay Chat. Yeah. Anybody have experience with IRC, Internet Relay yeah. Chat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I expected like 80% of the hands yeah. in the room. Yeah, right? I think that could take a couple hours to talk about, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. briefly, and you guys can expand as I, you want, but yeah. there's, there's certainly... As I said, you could take slices of the BBS world and branch it into how things evolved. Uh, okay. FidoNet is it was the first kind of uh, not the first, but a concept of how you could interconnect these right. things. I mean, of course, ARPANET was being developed, you know, at the university level. It's more organic than you might think because it was really just the same hobbyists that said, "How can we project this and make it larger, more accessible, easier to configure?" And it's the same stuff that we were doing yeah. on BBSs then. I want to I want to chat with people who are like minded. Or I want to argue with people who aren't. It's fine too. I want to be able to uh, play games or interact or do something social with people they're doing sure, there. Right, I sure. want access to content, whether that might be files that were in downloaded and <laughs> typed in from compute, or whether that's the latest episode of Stranger Things. We want to be able to have access to content and media. And it just as those things became more complex. Remember when Netflix was just mail me DVDs. Right. They said, let's try streaming. And like, I can't stream on dial-up, but they started it as people started to get broadband. It's it's that slow step-by-step, -step, it's too much to do now, let's find a way to make it a little bigger, a little faster, a little right. more integrated. Yeah, well, I mean, every time somebody accomplishes something, the next step is, okay, what's the next thing I want to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, now how can I be yep. able to do that? So at first, 
what's the first thing I want to do? I want to be able to plug a cartridge in a system and play Pac-Man on right. my TV. Right, that's level one. Yeah, yeah. now the next <laughs> yeah. thing was, okay, I've got a book full of games. Yeah. I want to be able to type them in on something and see what happens. And then after that, it was, okay, I've figured out how to do that. Now I want to run a system that other people can communicate yeah. on. It just keeps progressing yeah. as yeah. you go I mean, It's like time. a snowball. It, it rolls yeah. and yeah. gathers, yeah. Yeah, I also think it's a little bit of an attitude of, how do we do what we want to do regardless of the limitations that are in front of us? Like guys, it's like, I want to be able to, you know, send emails to whoever mm -hmm. BS, BBS you're on. Yeah, we can't stuff. do that now. Well, well let's figure let's out how we can do this. Let's find a way. Let's make it work. Let's make it happen. You know, maybe it worked perfectly. You know, well, and frankly, there were, there were probably 100,000 systems to get that done that didn't work that died. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just the ones that worked got propagated and, and iterated upon and became. Well, also because the stuff that worked got shared. Yeah. You know, got shared Our widely sharing and very was quickly, a big part too, of it. actually. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because there was a whole different mentality there. Instead of it being mine, I'm going to hoard it to myself yeah. or whatever. No, it was everybody trying to figure something out together to make something mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. Did I say a hand in the back? I thought I did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was just going to say that my experience was that uh, my family got our first computer in People getting phones installed in their house in the weirdest places. Why are they putting a phone in this back bedroom? Why are they putting a phone line yeah. in, you know, in the kitchen? Why are they putting a phone line? And then people found out, oh, they're not using the phone. They're using this conduit to do network activity mm -hmm. to some computer and, and would end up like, well, fine by us. Buy two phone lines. Buy three phone lines. They would care. <laughs> no, and I think with every iteration of every step as you go down the progression ladder, it's... Everything was fascinating. So I remember you and I walking in a mall in, in mm -hmm. Tallahassee, mm -hmm. and we walked into the local, it was Comcast, was the only provider in town that well, did this. Still. And they were displaying <laughs> crumble, crumble. on a computer their always on internet connection. This yeah. was the first time we were leaving that dial up BBS yeah. world. At, at that point, I think it was ISDN, was their, their yeah. always on maybe? Oh, even. wow. Yeah. And I remember I distinctly, we <laughs> clicked on something and the web page loaded like that yep. and like, we went like that. oh that's a game changer <laughs> but, but for comparison to what we had seen oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zip, right. Yeah, was right. Definitely it was like oh my god that loaded before I had a chance to breathe it was really there and it's just like a, a parlor trick like yeah. well yeah, yeah but we're not going to get that in our houses right I mean, it's just at the store and but probably for a long time like, that was true well no I would think it was like just a few months later we started having maybe in your neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> you lived in Tallahassee at that point you weren't in the country then. they knew where I came from they did they yeah. weren't going to get there <laughs> they really yes sir uh, first of all I want to say thank you <laughs> Any time. We could talk for days. I lived on a military base and basically it was my father bought one and then his friend bought one and then his friend bought one. Mm -hmm. so it was like pretty soon it was four of us trading books and magazines back and forth with each other. Wasn't that glorious? Wasn't that fantastic? Yeah, oh like, man. We had like stacks of cassette tapes with cassette drive and all that. It was nuts. Yep. Um, I guess my other thing is, is that when we talk about BBS and playing games, now we're looking at cloud computing. Mm -hmm. And like uh, the cloud and how basically I can pull up my phone and my PlayStation 5 can be on my phone. Mm -hmm. Right, it. right. Yep. So what is your guys' opinion on that? Well, I think we're progressing in a good way or what's well, and sometimes the compute isn't even real. Even the compute is virtualized in the cloud. Now, the cloud is just some other computer, but it's not gear you have to own even. No, no. And I'm, so Mo hinted at a little while ago is do it for my job. I work at the main data center for all state agencies here in Florida, and I'm one of the managers there. of that. We're Georgia. 
We're huh? in Georgia. We're in Georgia. Georgia. You said in Florida. No, you said, said here, in, here Florida. in Florida. Okay, here in Florida. Give me edit this out of the podcast. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm, this is the part I'm keeping for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, cloud computing and and all of that is such a it's a very controversial topic in my industry right now because it really stems more around security. For us, back in the day, security wasn't a concern. On these bulletin board systems, mm -hmm. it never dawned on me that somebody was out there to be malicious and hurt me or my computer in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. We talked about cutting the leads on the Amiga 500. Mm -hmm. yep. We did that with blind trust having <laughs> a dot matrix printed sheet of paper mm -hmm. That we just like, okay, here's the diagram. All right, cut this one, boop, and then oh, plug it back in. Oh, my dot matrix works. printer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peel so, the tractor feet off the edge. <laughs> I mean, I, I am a bit concerned with cloud computing just because of the security aspect of it and how things are going in that direction these days. But if you don't progress, you're dead. Yeah, well, it's it, going to happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's the direction we're going. I mean, and, I mean, I think it's wonderful. I mean, the more stuff you can make available to more people, great. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's a downside to everything, right? I mean, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day. He was talking about how, like, you know, I can't remember directions anymore uh, because, mm -hmm. yep. you know, it's because it's of my phone and things like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. phone numbers. Yep. But my kids never heard a busy signal in their life. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, things change. But I have faith that things are going to be better, you know, and ultimately I think it's going to be I think the benefits thing. of that, you know, far outweigh, you know, the risks. And we'll mitigate the risks. We'll find what they mm -hmm. are. You know, and circle back to your question about the Atari 800. I was just over in the uh, the computing museum over there, and, and I saw an 800 XL with a Fuji net on it, right, which is effectively, hey, you love your Atari 8-bit? or Commodore or whatever, plugs this thing on it and access a file system. Don't worry about dial-up BBS now. Right. Just touch these servers that are out there and open and get those disk images and bring those things in. And it's like having the access to the entire library and knowledge and wealth that we accumulated in the 80s accessible at your fingertips. And that's, I mean, if, for someone who's a nostalgia junkie like I am, like we are, there's the risk of what that could introduce is far outweighed by the joy you will get out of it yeah. by exploring it, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a wondrous world we live in now, but it was just a little bit more wonderful back then. <laughs> you have one more question? Yeah. Are you, are you active <laughs> on any of the present-day like, Telnet BBSs? You know, we have a, a big-time uh, follower of Gen X Grown Up who runs on Telnet B BBS, uh, and I visit his periodically. I don't frequent it regularly, but uh, I love that they exist. Like, I, it's one of those things, like, I don't have time to do that right now, but, I, God, I'm happy it exists. I'm so happy that stuff be, be kept alive, you know, and, and that I go to it. I go to it periodically. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Gents, I think we have covered. We have some great comments from you guys. I want to thank, thank all of you yeah. for taking the time. Yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes please. please. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what year did you have your BBSs? Uh -oh. All right. No. Uh, have a boat to pick. Be graduated I didn't take my ginseng today, so I'm trying to... Uh, Let's see. Like 88, 89 era, and then again, a different one for no, a mine, club in 90, 91. I had to have mine, because that was middle school, 86? Yeah. Yeah, 80, no, no, 84. Wow. 84. Yeah. You were in middle school watching other people thank one of the machines? Yep, sure. Yeah, wow. Oh, okay. Yep. What? Yep. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was so, wrong when with When did that? you run yours? What, what? Uh, probably the 80. Oh, early sure. days, early, yeah, yeah. early, early yeah. days. And I think yeah. I only ran mine for about a year. Yeah. Well, I, ran, like I ran one on the Atari, then one later on my Amiga. Yeah. Both yeah. were fun, yeah. yeah. Uh, 64, nice. yep. Amiga one, then I had a, I had a PC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I got a tattle. I'm pretty sure his mom made him get the second line. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds so like... She have a, so, she, so she can talk on the phone, basically. It sounds cool. like you're a big enough hobbyist. She's like, okay, he's going to be doing this. Let's remove the pain points. So. I, and I just want... There's one question yeah, I want to ask, because I know you had this, okay, and right, I was yeah. always jealous of it, but I want to know if anybody else in the room had it. Anybody else have the War Games modem? Oh, the acoustic coupler that you put the handset in? Anybody else? I one, two, yes. yeah. No, I, oh, my God. I, George, I, I shut one. up. <laughs> Jesus. I want one now. Is there one for sale at the convention? I don't care if it even works. I just want one you, of those you on know, a desk. Like multi-line rotary phones are on display like our museum pieces the other, the other room. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway. Remember so, the days yeah. of the rotary phone. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That does not work. <laughs> yeah. There was never that clean of a signal yeah, yeah. ever. He missed the no. handshake signal. Yeah. Not gonna it was secret military tech. It did work. Really, man. <laughs> but it was still, seeing that in that movie, 
And knowing that I just had the little plug, I had the C64 and the 300 baud modem that plugged into the cartridge mm, yeah, port on sure. the back and you had the telephone. That's all I had. I always thought because I had that, that my device was lacking somehow. I didn't find oh, no. out until later <laughs> that my device was far <laughs> superior <You're updated>. <laughs> to that. But I wanted that that physical that thing <laughs> down. I wanted that so yeah. bad. All right. I know we're just a bit over time. Again, uh, as I was saying, thank you all for yeah. taking the time to be here. Uh, if you enjoy our kind of craziness, we would certainly love if you would check us out and give us an audition. Uh, we have some cards up here to pick up. We're Gen X Grown Up, both on YouTube and uh, as a podcast, you can find wherever you find podcasts, of course. Uh, but we're very grateful. Yes. George, thank Mo, you. thanks everyone. We appreciate you. Have yep. a great rest thank of your you. show. Thank you guys. Fantastic. Appreciate it. <laughs> Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Don't know why. I paid extra. You've already got your money out. That is the premium.